A small portion of today's video is kindly sponsored by Brooklinen. As far as a clean slate or blank space goes for a renovation, you can't ask for much more than a 90s builder grade, white painted, minimally trimmed out room, which is exactly what we're working with here in our primary bedroom. We're so grateful for this spacious room, but it definitely could use a bit of cozying up and customization to help it fit my husband Weston and my style. Since moving to this house in 2021, we focused our remodeling attentions to the much more pressing needs of of this fixer-upper homestead. But with those big, scary, and moldy projects out of the way, we're finally able to give this space some much needed TLC. We haven't done a single thing to improve this room. In fact, everything in here is original to the house, from light fixtures to the paint and trim, all the way down to the very sad carpet. So our goal with this renovation is to refresh every inch of this space from floor to ceiling, and to do it as affordably as possible. We love to use leftover materials from other projects, visit thrift or bargain stores for certain pieces, and use our own skills and tools to do the majority of the work. We're taking this blank and boring bedroom and transforming it into the moody, elegant, vintage revival space we've always wanted. Today we're sharing part one of this project. We're building custom millwork and wall treatments, color drenching the room in a gorgeous rich paint color, and keeping it real in the roller coaster that is DIY home projects with all the twists and turns along the way. We're so glad you're here and we're excited to take you along on this next step of the journey of taking this place from house to home. Welcome to day one of our bedroom makeover. I am so excited to finally get this project started. We've been dreaming about this and planning for it for a long time. These are the paint colors that we have been sampling and one of these five is the one that we've chosen to go with. I would love it right now if you'd comment below which one you think it is. I will share with you which paint color we went with a little bit later on. Before paint can go up, we need to start in on our wall treatment and trim installation. Wall treatments is our favorite way to refresh a space and help it feel more current yet classic at the same time. And so in this beautiful blue painter's tape, I've been scoping out the box molding arrangement and scale that we want to go with for some of the walls in this room. I've already gotten out on our miter saw, cut some of these trim pieces for our box molding to size. I've done a lot of figuring and measuring throughout the room. So the installation for this should go relatively quickly. Hello, Weston. Hey. Setting up the laser level. Okay. okay, I have written little maps for each wall okay. and how the trim goes on. So living room wall here, I kind of factored in the peak. So we're gonna go five inches off the corner to set the first one. It feels like deja vu to be putting together box molding once again. You may recognize similar materials and methods if you watched our living room makeover last year. When we were gathering up materials for this project, we started by using a lot of the leftover scraps and salvaged pieces from the living room project. And then I was able to go to our local hardware store, grab some new pieces along with some discounted scrap pieces that they had in a bin. Now these trim pieces are actually quite affordable already. It's less than $6 for an eight foot length, but I was able to find them for one or $2 a piece in anywhere from five to seven and a half feet. And we had the perfect amount to create 12 different pairs of these rectangles, one that's taller on the top, one that's shorter on the bottom, that goes around three different walls in our bedroom. Having done this before, we went into this project with some valuable lessons learned. And so I took several days before we started installing this wall treatment to pre-measure, do all of the math and figuring, plot everything out. I even made us little maps or blueprints for each wall. Some of our walls and arrangements were a little funky compared to others. And so accommodations had to be made in the measurements for that. I pre-cut all of our trim pieces with mitered edges 
is so that when Weston and I were both there to be hands-on, it was super easy to grab from each pile labeled with different lengths to get everything up on the wall. We used adhesive as well as 18 millimeter brad nails. And because no house has perfectly square walls and ceilings and corners, our house being a big offender of this, we used our laser level to give us that top line and then we measured off from that point for the rest of the molding that we installed from top to bottom. Oh, it looks so good, you guys. The box molding wall treatment is officially installed. I went in mostly off camera and did all of the caulking of nail holes, seams, the mitered edges where the trim meets the wall. You may notice that this time we did not put any flat paneling over the texture of our walls. We have that typical orange peel texture. I don't love it, but Weston and I thought that in a room that has less natural light, so therefore less harsh shadows, um, and then also the plan is to drench it in a darker color, we could get away with not having flat panels behind the molding that we put on the wall. And honestly, I don't think it looks half bad. I think this was a good move. Of course, that saves money and it saved us a ton of time. Weston was very complimentary of my cuts that I made, which is very sweet. Um, and even little spots where there's some variation or the wall isn't straight, things are a little bowed or crooked. Caulking covers a multitude of sins and I cannot wait to see it just drenched in that beautiful color that we picked. But before we get to that part of the project, I want to thank Brooklinen for sponsoring the next couple of minutes and for making today's video possible. Now that the debris and dust is out of here from constructing this wall treatment, I can once again put our Brooklinen sheets and duvet cover back on our bed. We have loved this luxury bedding company so much. They have such an amazing variety, but our absolute favorite is the Lux Sateen material, and we have it here in their Hardcore Sheet Bundle. It has a 480 thread count, a slightly luminous finish, and it's the perfect balance of cooling and cozy, perfect for year-round sleeping. I believe this is my pillow. Mine's the squishier one. That goes over there. The ordering process through Brooklinen was super easy and straightforward. They offer these wonderful bundles, which are 20% off versus if you put these individual pieces in your cart. The best part is that you can choose to mix and match through the 20 plus different colors and patterns that they have on their website. So I went with this cream color duvet cover and then these lovely brown classic striped sheets. Weston and I are firm believers in high quality bedding. It's important for us after a long hard day of work to be able to fall into bed and have the bedding that we're sleeping in be cooling and comfortable and luxurious, get softer with each wash, yet hold up really well over time like a good quality heirloom piece. One of the biggest things that we've been disappointed with with other brands in the past, even more expensive brands, is that the sheets or other pieces of bedding become threadbare, buttons fall off, zippers break within just a matter of months. That has not been the case with any of the Brooklyn and pieces that we have gotten. And so I can wholeheartedly recommend this brand to you all. And they're running a special discount for my viewers right now. Follow the link in my description box to brooklinen.com and then use code Natalie Bennett for $20 off your purchase of $100 or more. If you're in the market for some new sheets or bedding, I cannot recommend Brooklinen enough. They've been our absolute favorite. And even though these sheets are going to be on a different bed by the end of this room makeover and things around us are looking a little janky right now I think the beauty and the quality of these sheets speak for themselves no matter what part of the process we're in and this is she hi this Friday the 16th yes oh wow yes the room will be empty and are you taking away the old carpet perfect 
All right, we'll see you on Friday. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Okay, <laughs> change of plans. So we are replacing the carpet in this room as part of this makeover from ceiling to floor, but by some miracle, this never happens. They're running ahead of schedule. The installer just called me and said that our carpet that we ordered is supposed to be delivered to them tomorrow. Today is Wednesday, today is actually Valentine's Day. And they called to see if they could come out on Friday to install the carpet. I thought it was going to be next week. That was the initial timeline that we got. I thought the carpet would be part of part two of this makeover series. It just might be here in part one, which means I have less than 48 hours to get everything painted and done. I was planning only on doing paint prep today. <laughs> I guess I made the bed too soon, but I have to quickly just kind of get everything out of this room so that I can set up and paint. Oh, I have to take the ceiling light fixture down. That is typically something that Weston does when I have more notice about painting, but I guess I'm, I'm putting the why in DIY today. Let's do this. Okay, so the quick paint prep is done. I did a lot of hole filling for the walls, which needs to dry for at least a couple of hours. So we're gonna start with painting the ceiling. I got rid of a bunch of uh, cobwebs and stuff like that, uninstalled as many fixtures as I could. And you should probably start with the ceiling anyway. So I'm going to drop cloth this bed. I have some plastic sheeting. And Weston just called and reminded me that we have a date night tonight. Happy Valentine's Day to us. A couple weeks ago, apparently, he booked a reservation to our favorite restaurant, arranged for childcare and everything. Uh, so I'm hoping to get this ceiling painted before it's time to get ready to go on date night. Let's see if we can do this. All right, who's ready to play? Guess that paint color. All of these paints are from Sherwin-Williams and the first color I tested and number four on the list at the beginning was the one I thought I liked the most from the paint sample card. This is pewter green and while lovely in some lights, most of the time it felt a bit too one note and too cool in this room. Next, we have a lighter shade, which was the guess of many of you when I posted a poll on Instagram. This was number three from the list before, and it's called Retreat. This read so cool and grayish blue that even my nine-year-old knew it was not right for the space. I don't like the lightest green. I agree. I think that the it light- looks gray. You're right. That's what I thought too. Does it feel kind of coastal, like if it was in a beach-themed home? Yeah. Next up at number five on the list at the beginning is the darkest color we sampled. This is Ripe Olive, and it's one of the most gorgeous paint colors I have ever seen. But for this space, it was simply too dark to have much dimension. Most of the time, it just looks straight up black. But I'd love to find another spot for this color somewhere else in the house because it is truly that beautiful. Number two on that list that you saw was another gorgeous dark shade. It was just a touch lighter than the previous. This is called Shade Grown, and while lovely, it was still pulling too muddy and too cool. So that means that the very last paint we ended up sampling was the one that Weston and I both fell in love with as soon as we saw it up on the wall and dry. Meet Rosemary, which is shade number one on this list. It's the perfect desaturated green that pulls warm but not too yellow in some lights and cozy neutral in others. This has everything we want as far as tone, hue, lightness, and dimension, and we're so excited to drench this room in this beautiful color starting here at the ceiling. Okay, here goes nothing. Oh my gosh, I love it. This is gonna get old real quick.
right, coat number one on the ceiling is done. I am a sweaty mess right now. <laughs> it is so much work to paint a ceiling, especially one that is not flat. And this corner over here where I started, I started in the hardest spot. Even with the extended pole, it was so hard to get enough leverage to really push the paint into the deepest part of the texture. I did go back over a couple of really patchy kind of bare spots um, after I did the first coat, just so that when I go in with the second coat, it will be the final coat, I hope. And I used nearly a gallon for just this first coat on the ceiling. I won't use as much for the second, but man, I'm probably gonna have to order more paint. If we're doing a color drenching thing, it's gonna be a lot. And I did go with like a higher quality tier than just the base, like cheapest budget option. Um, I can't imagine how streaky it would be had I gone with that lower quality. This first coat will not dry adequately in time for me to get started in on the second coat before it's time for us to leave on date night. So I'm calling it a day. I'm gonna go take a shower, get myself dolled up, and I hope you enjoy this little date break. Meet me at Manhattan Hench. Meet me under Columbus Circle. I'll be waiting there for you. Meet me when the stars align. Meet me when the earth divides. You know it's a good date night when it ends at the hardware store. After a lovely dinner, Weston and I headed to Lowe's to pick up a few more gallons of the paint that I would need so that I could finish this paint project before our carpet was installed. So I got up early the next morning, did some prep for the painting. I disassembled our bed frame, which is actually being passed on to a sister of mine. We're upgrading our bed in part two of this series, so stay tuned for that. And I did some cleanup and recalking of baseboard trim and our window sills. And just as I was about to get started with the painting again, I got a call from our carpet installation company saying that our carpet actually wasn't delivered early like they thought it would be. And we were back on our original schedule of the carpet being delivered and installed next week. So that part of this process is also going to be in part two, but not to worry. We have plenty to do around here. And now that we have a little bit more time to get this paint up, I'm gonna do a little bit more trim work in this room. Weston and I actually discussed over dinner how the trim around the doors and the lack of trim around the windows in the room started to feel a little bit unfinished or shabby compared to the nice new box molding that we had just installed. And we were confident that in our pile of scrap molding and trim and odds and ends that we have from previous projects, I would be able to put together sort of a cornice style top molding feature for all of the doors as well as the two windows. And I was able to do just that. So I started with the door molding, prying off the top edge, cutting down the mitered corners and placing my trim arrangement on top, sort of as a cornice. I am so happy with how these turned out and so pleased that I was able to basically put this all together using just scraps or salvaged pieces. We did have to go get one more tiny little wood piece to finish the project, but that was no big deal at all. Chatting in a coffee shop Sitting by the windowsill Walking down 8th Avenue with you What do we think? I think this looks so good and of course we've got different colors going on because nothing has been painted yet. We've got the bright white of the new trim, the almond yellowy white of the 90s trim, and then of course the little wood piece. But everything all together, especially with the caulking and the gaps and the seams, I just think it came together so well. This is what the window looks like over here. In addition to the cornice, I also put just these little boards on the side to frame it out because we had those as extra and I think it turned out so good. Okay, I'm about to put Weston on the spot. I need your honest thoughts about the top trim, the cornices of the doors and windows. What do you think? They look good. I like them. Nice. Adds texture. Yeah. You're a craftswoman. <laughs> <laughs> that was a relatively quick and easy project 
that I think has a pretty good impact. Better than those like just cheapy mitered tiny little frames. The other thing that Weston and I talked about on date night was making sort of a different wall. So we've got the box molding around the three other walls in here, but then when you're looking this way at sort of the entrance, this is kind of like a foyer to our bedroom. These walls were looking kind of um, unfinished. It helps to get that trim that I just put on the doors, but we're also thinking of putting a beadboard wall here in this spot. This is actually where I plan in the end to have a little vanity area or something like that. And while scrap hunting in our garage, we found almost a full board, uh, a panel of beadboard, and then Weston just picked up a little bit more at the hardware store to piece in the rest of what we need for its length. So. We're gonna work on this now. Not bad at all. That looks great, actually. This, that, I think that wall is not straight. That wall goes like this. That's fine. I actually have, oh, ooh, I have some really thin quarter round with caulk with caulk how are you making it to get up there what you're too high you're not able to get over Just push up push up up on this what Well, we woke up this morning and the beadboard was still on the wall. So I guess mm. the adhesive and the brad nails are doing their job. The caulking that I put on it last night is all nice and dry. We also hung this curtain. If you're new here, this doorway actually goes into an ensuite office that I have. And we will probably address a door situation when we work on that space right now. It's all about the bedroom and painting outfit. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Before we paint, Weston has been working on getting some initial wiring done of the sconces on the wall here that are gonna go up. He also added an outlet for me, which will be so nice because we've had a extension cord situation behind our bed up until now. The electrical in this house is always a bit of an adventure, but I'm thankful for our resident electrician. <laughs> You're now our resident painter, so. <laughs> We have a paint sprayer thing that we've used in the past. We're gonna see if it can help us get this job done quicker here for the walls. We've only spray painted like trim pieces and stuff with it. We'll see. We'll see how it works. Let's get started. Oh, wow. That's amazing. shots of paint color that I shared with you all looked 
so different from each other. And that is honestly, I think what I love the most about this color is that in all different lightings, all different times of the day, depending on what little nook or corner you're in in this room, it doesn't feel like one blah single shade, but there's, there's so much dimension to it. I love how this turned out. Yeah, it looks really good. It turned out nice, it dried nice. Yeah. Color, yeah, it looks really good. It really does. All your trim pieces you added on the doors looks good. Thank you, I think it actually does add yeah. Something. I'm I'm really glad I was able to do that. It is such a mess on the floor. Yeah. It's way easier to paint when you know the carpet is getting ripped out soon, but we did not want to put our nice mattress or our new sheets in this room no. with the disaster zone. So we uh, we had a little slumber party in the living room. We brought our mattress out there and slept nice and cozy. We'll probably do the same thing tonight because mm -hmm. it's it's still a mess. Even though we are done with the painting, we got the call. The carpet gets delivered tomorrow and I'm gonna be picking this camera right back up to start filming part two. We're gonna share all the special finishing touches. I have a little reading corner that Ooh. I might be able to make. New adventure of the year. <laughs> what, reading? Yeah, reading. <laughs> I'm an audiobook gal myself, but I like how books look. <laughs> We've done so many different rooms that were, I don't know, communal spaces, family spaces. Gathering rooms. It's just nice to work on a little spot for you and me. I agree. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and that you're excited to see part two. It's going up in a couple of weeks because I upload here every other week on this channel. But if you would like to see more behind the scenes and sneak peeks, I went thrift shopping, antique shopping. I did a whole mood board of the different things that I have been selecting for this space. Then follow the link in my description box to the Patreon video that I put up over there. Five bucks a month for the price of a coffee. You can have all the other extras and exclusive content. And the first month you sign up for Patreon, you actually get all of the stuff that I've uploaded over there. We have fun. Well, thank you for being my teammate for You're this welcome. job. Thanks for being a great electrician and painter, apparently. Thanks to Brooklyn for sponsoring a portion of this video as well. Yeah, and thank you guys so much for spending a little part of your day here with us on my channel. We'll catch you later. I'm gonna have a blooper reel. <laughs> Into the thick of it. I'm freaking sick of it. <laughs> oh! Oh! Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, that's cool! I was in here with the bobby pin trying to loosen up. Oh, I missed the sweet dance move. <laughs> what? <you> <laughs> Weston just came out here while I was wearing these safety goggles and he stops and he goes, you look like your dad. I actually do look like my dad, uh, apparently even more so when I'm wearing eye protection.